The Council has assembled. They are eager to hear your report. Hello! Welcome to the Council. We begin tonight's meeting at the Council by calling the Council to order. Hello to everyone and thanks for joining us. The Council's a live Twitch talk show and podcast discussing Star Wars The Old Republic. I am Elise, and with me are my fellow Council members, Magic Ace. Hello. And Sakari. Hello. <laughs> what a brat. <laughs> I mean, what a lovely co host I have. <laughs> Doesn't work unless you have the pigtails. Um, anyway. Um, <laughs> Red now will not be with us tonight. He had a prior engagement. He's too and cool he has- for us. So he has left us with his thoughts, which we will mention further along. But it, it, right. otherwise it's just great. And because it's it's red now, there are plentiful thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <clears throat> so this week we're going to be talking about companion return stories in Swotor. So the ones that are coming. Not that, that are already here, but the ones that are coming. Well, that's good, because otherwise we'd be bored to tears. Anyways, <laughs> after our live broadcast, you can find our recorded episodes everywhere podcasts are found. And on our YouTube channel, it's gorgeous. You should go check it out. You can see our faces again. You should also <laughs> click on the panel below. Bless you, Magic Baby. You should click on the panel below and find that website that we have, thecouncilswotor.com. Also, check out our social media, like Twitter, the Council Swotor. And you can also find Facebook at facebook.com slash council tour. But wait, there's more. You can also find our Patreon page at patreon.com slash council tour. And if you just generally Google us and or <clears throat> the Magic Ace, we're pretty much everywhere. Just give, give it a try. It'll be good for you. You know, you should do infomercials. I think you'd be good at it. But but wait, there's more. It's very natural. <laughs> you know why? Because I asked Magic Hubby to do something, and he he starts to leave, and I'm like, but wait, there's more. <laughs> He's like, like, oh, oh man, I got a two for one yeah. deal. Yep. Yep. Yeah, all right. Well, so <laughs> the, what's funny is that Elise says, okay. We're only going to talk about what's coming. We don't want to talk about what's in the past. And then the icebreaker question I have take, is exactly the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, my good. goodness. Oh, my luck. That's, okay. That would happen. Um, so, yes, let's get, <laughs> let's get into the icebreaker question. Uh, this is just a question as we uh, do from week to week that just kind of gets the discussion started. A little bit of something to dip our toes in the water. So. Uh, topic tonight, returning companions, SWOTORs, return stories. What's that noise all about? Uh, the icebreaker question, which of the companion return stories so far have you found memorable and why? For any reason, is there any one of them that stands out to you that you are like, yeah. hey, here's one that I think is kind of cool or for or that at least stands out to me? And why? Feel free also to answer in chat. We'd love to hear what you guys have to say. If there's something that we think is worth throwing into the show, we'll definitely make a mention of it. Yes. Indeed. All right, Elise. Magic Baby says mama. That's her companion. <laughs> she liked the return. <laughs> um, okay, so I had two, but uh, both of mine come from the new content and not the old content. Okay. Um. And I really don't know why for the second one. But anyway, um, so I haven't done, as I've mentioned before, I haven't finished the Sith Warrior story. So I don't know old vet. But I really enjoyed Prophet and Plunder, right? Or Yes. Plunder, That's where Prophet. she and Gold show up. Yes. So vet in that I thought was adorable. So I really enjoyed that that chapter it's very she's very enfp so i'm I'm not even surprised that she stands out to you (laughs) and also i play kotor and i love kotor and she is mission bayo thank you Mm -hmm. she's mission yes so So, there you go and then the second one is torian of course uh but i really liked the new content torian story it was more satisfying, I think, in many ways to me than that's the. What she said. Yes, well. It is what she that's said. Probably exactly what happened in there. Because that, how about we go get the alone <laughs> fade to black moment? Anyway, um, so I, I don't know. I just I I found the Torian thing kind of, oh, kind of like high school musically, in the base story. 
but I really enjoyed it. So. Well, now you just ruined it for me. Thanks. Yes. I'm sorry, it was. It was High School Musical too. I'm so I have a theory that you guys are like the, the women fans of this game are by far more more militant about their their enjoyment of uh, companion romances than men are. Even though I think, or maybe men are better at hiding it. I don't know. It's a theory. Or I'm maybe it's just that men out. are all gross and they're like, hey, let's just dress them in the slave girl outfits. Oh yeah, we don't really <laughs> care about the actual romances. We don't want the story. Yeah, that's. Yeah, they're like they're, just, they're like look at my eye candy in the bikini. <laughs> yeah, so um, at least I was going to say to to what you'd said about Vet. Um, she's voiced by Cat Tabor, um, and uh, ever since Mission Veo, vale, I've had like a crush on Cat Tabor. So it's like every character that I hear that voice, I'm like, I know who that is. So oh, yeah, God. it's it's been awesome. It's been a great fun ride so far it's, with Vet for me. I thought that was very cute that they brought her back as another Twi'lek. Um, and what what I have played of Vet in the Sith War story, Warrior story, has she's very she's very engaging. Yes, very much so. Of of most of the companions, I have to say in the original base stories. But again, I haven't seen the whole thing all the way. Through. And sadly, that's my like ultra dark character. So I've had to zap her a few times. I don't know what she's like. <laughs> don't zap her. So that yeah, colors my. She's pretty light side. I think if you if you're a light side, you'd get along with her just swell. Like you guys would be buddies. I think you get along with her dark side too. She just doesn't approve of everything. Do she's like, oh, it's so nice to have a Sith to do my bidding when I want when he's on my good side. But it's kind of scary. Mm. Well, I agree. Magic, what what about you? What do you uh, what did you find memorable so far about companions that have returned? Uh, definitely Torian for a few different reasons. One, because I was looking forward to his return. Of all the companions, I was waiting and waiting and wasn't disappointed. Really liked it. And it was very much Mandalorian. And I really enjoyed I really enjoyed those stories, like the Karen Travis stories, um, where she wrote about the troopers and Mandalorians and stuff. Like I liked that stuff to me. To me it was very Mandalorian. I liked it. Not to mention it's freaking Torian. <laughs> so I really enjoyed that. I suspect your um, opinion is biased. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. I would never mm. be biased. Anyways, the other one that was actually pretty memorable to me, surprisingly so, Magic Baby, here, eat something. Um, uh, I would say it was Eric Jorgen, surprisingly. Oh. I don't even like the female trooper storyline, really. Um, I like the female trooper as far as her romance but not the actual story like the story bores me but i like their romance because it's a very military romance right and military Eric romance Jorgen <laughs> is very much by the book yep. military and he's in and the female trooper is if she's light side is very much just in line with that so to me it's kind of like it's sweet it's the perfect story it's actually my in-laws they were both air force and they met and married and like it kind of reminds me of my in-laws now and at the time when i did the story the original trooper story i hadn't even met them so to me i was like that's actually kind of cool retroactively looking back i'm like oh my gosh it's my in-laws <laughs> yeah, yeah i get to live but, my in-laws romance it's great yeah it, that's a it blast i'm sure actually pretty cool it surprised <laughs> me i didn't think i would enjoy that reunion but i liked it the only other one i was really looking forward to was andronicos and the one i'm looking forward to now is vector if none of the other ones come back i really could care less i just really can't wait for vector <laughs> ant-man just saying Shut up. <laughs> hey, it's you know, I was intrigued by the um, the Eric Jordan romance, but not enough to go back and do the Trooper story again. Yeah, same here. Like, I really liked it. The I first watched time, it. Somebody else's, like, again, <laughs> Ninja Lama does the cutscene, so I watched oh, right. her like video series so i could just watch it and see what happened and then she also did the new content if you romance through did that too so i just watched the whole thing and i was like oh cool i saw it thank hmm. you moving on indeed <laughs> so. okay so before i answer this let me throw redness out there he <laughs> said um risha um and that's very recent so i think 5.7 risha risha <laughs> came out correct why are you yes. guys laughing yeah, he didn't even know it came out last week. He was like, wait, Risha's back? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, oh. So he lived it. Yes. 
Yeah, we she were talking about it in chat last week's episode. We were typing to each other in the Twitch chat last week. He was like, wait, Rishi's back? I'm like, yeah, she and Corso are both back. He goes, wait, can I reject Corso? I'm like, no, you have to get them both at the same time. He's like, oh, crap. <laughs> so he did it from last week to now. That's <laughs> hilarious. He made a beeline for it and went and did it. So Rishi is yeah. his one uh, being the driving factor for the gunslinger story for so long and then becoming a companion was very cool so um, I'm, he's happy to have Risha back she's a very enthralling character that is for sure like I, I worried a bit about her I don't know how to step with Risha you know yeah because she could backfire cool on you one. she's one of those like she's she's with it mm -hmm. she's very street smart but you, I, you, you almost kind of expect her to backfire on you at some point I don't know mm -hmm. my answer to this uh, what did I find memorable um, I was thinking back through everything I actually made a big list of everybody and was looking through it, and I think the one that's that I think was the most memorable return, although they're kind of a very muted character, is actually Bodar, because you, you, he would it was like the whole hey here's the the championship thing, the eternal championship, and you had to earn your levels, and then there was so much more to that, so. Yeah, uh, you know what I kind of forgot about that once, but I should have thrown in Blizz. I really liked Blizz. Blizz. I thought that one was very cute. Even though it was very muted, mm -hmm. it was very short. It was one of the few alerts that I actually did. Yeah, really. Because he was really cute. Everybody loves Blizz. How can you not mm -hmm. like Blizz? Yeah, make it. Yeah, make it. I love Blizz because at the time he was a freaking great tank, not because he was actually cool. Oh, you liked him for the I utility. Got, uh, then I got Treek, and then I'm like, whatever, see you, Blizz. Yeah, Treek kind of sidelined everybody for a while. That's understandable because of the utility. Oh, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, like, Bodo was really good. I enjoyed um, going through that whole eternal thing. I actually want to do it again, but I just want to have a DPS strong enough to do it. My current main is a tank, and I don't know that he's going to be able to survive that necessarily. So um, that was really good. Um I don't know, like, like there's a lot to it. I, the Andronicus Ravel one broke my heart because I had, uh, apparently on my on the character that I had um, married Andronicus on, I, I apparently cheated on him and had forgotten that I'd done that. And then when he showed back up, then Theron was angry at me. But I did that, I've mentioned this before, but I did that before the, it's like right at the end of, of the Eternal Throne, but before any of the new content. So there hasn't been any kind of betrayal stuff yet. So to me, it's like that added a whole extra thing. Like he's the spurned, you know, um, angry lover. I hated lover. Lana's like reject story. That made me actually feel bad. I'm like, cops, I didn't care about it. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Theron was meh. But Lana was like, oh, really? I feel so terrible. <laughs> she actually like hung her head and walked away. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they definitely stick it to you. Oh, boy, let me tell you. Wow. I haven't had any of that business yet. Oh, it's coming. That's because it's, you're not you... playing in the, your cards right, girl. Come on. Be a player. Wow. Yeah, you got to be pretty promiscuous to start breaking your own heart in this game. <laughs> Usually yeah, you can get away um... with it, but now they don't let you so much. I mean, my agent, like, totally, like, was sleeping with everybody, but... Yeah, but that's expected. That's part of your job. So right. nobody gets hurt. Vector's like, oh, you're very pragmatic. You can marry someone else in front of Vector on Voss, and he still is like, I want to spend my life with you. Yeah, I know, right? I think I did that, That's, right? that's probably because he can't see. I have my agent through Cot V or Kotet. So... He can too, Sakari. He can't see. <laughs> I mean, Lies. Like it... Anyways, moving on before I start fighting with Sakari here. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so let's, let's get into the question of the week. At least... So this week we asked the community and we went through the list of companions that are going to return, uh, excluding the ones that are due in 5.8 and 5.9. And of those that are remaining, who would you like to see return the most? So I will go through the list. Um, I think maybe doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, when um, chat votes probably would be most expedient. So number one is Kira Carson. Number two is Doc. Number three is Theron Cedrics. Number four is Zenith. Um, number five is Nadia. Number six is Tano. Number seven is Jaysa. Number eight is Kemval. And number nine is Scourge. Scourge? Scourge. Scourge. Lord Scourge. Scourge. Yes, that's the one. 
I have not and, gotten And you it know what? Yeah. Say it with a growl or you're not saying it right. Yes. <laughs> well, I haven't you, done the story with him yet. You have I've license, but let me tell you something. So, That's Jedi Knight storyline. And if you... I, that, In I my opinion, the Jedi it. Knight storyline is the first one anybody should do when they touch this game. Play the Jedi Knight line. That's, that's what Volk said I to did me. the sword first, and I love it. Went, yeah, he goes, oh, no, I have to leave now, is what he said. Oh, yeah. Last year, yeah, with at, um, extra life. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I did the Sork it. first, and honestly, I don't think I missed out on anything because the Sork and the Jedi and I don't really like yeah. intersect really. So doing those two interchangeably, I think, is not a big deal. But like, say, like the agent story, it's great to do the agent last because you recognize someone from every other single story in the agent story. Yeah, yeah, that's very clever. So, all right, let me let me put a caveat in here before we go anywhere further with this because I need to make sure that I say this because I got a lot of feedback from um, Reddit and Twitter. People were saying stuff. Hey, what's up with Tano Vic being on this list? Okay. Uh, I went through the list of every companion I could find that was a companion at one stage and then um, has returned and then subtracted those guys and the people that were left. And I thought, well, what do I do with Tano Vig? Because I know you bump into him very briefly in the uh, Kotfi story. Um, yeah. uh, somebody pointed out to me, and I did not know this throughout the week, that the voice actor that voiced him had passed away. Um, at some point, and that was kind of like a, a going away kind of a thing. So that's the end of it for Tarnovic. You just kind of see him, that's the end of it. Um, I had no idea that that was a thing. Um, but I, I think it's good to leave him on there because at the same time, he is not a returning companion. And I think uh, Bioware, if they really wanted to, probably could put another voice actor in there and bring him back if they wanted to. You know, that it's it's doable. So um, I thought, let's just leave him on the list. And if anybody wants to vote for him, they can. They totally. Well, why would he come back that? though? But his personality, unless like, unless you're, he's gonna profit hugely. Like, say your dark side, unless he's gonna profit hugely, he's not gonna join you willingly. So I honestly think like a companion like him coming back is kind of silly, in my personal opinion. But that's just me because I'm all about the story. Mm -hmm. I'm just like that doesn't make sense to his personality. All right, Especially so let life. me also say this: we have sent to chat. If those of you are viewing us live. Um, yes, the uh, the question is there and all of the uh, the answers. If you are wanting to vote in this uh, live poll, all you have to do is say the, the letter that corresponds to the character that you would like I to see back in the numbers. Yeah, it's, yeah, numbers or whatever. But like the, the way that the bot works, <laughs> you can say three if you want, but it's not going to count, unfortunately. Oh. But, but if you want Theron Sadrex, say C. That's all you need to say. And it can be lowercase or uppercase. It's case insensitive. But, uh, it, or, or you can not count. That's cool, too. I mean, if you, if you want to <laughs> do that, that's fine. So um, shall we discuss amongst ourselves how we would have answered this while we give our people a little bit of time to, uh, to pitch sure, in? Sure, I say Doc. Doc, really? Of the yes. ones still to return, Doc would be your pick. Of all the characters on the pub side, he was one of the only ones that made me actually laugh. The other ones, I kind of space barred through everything because I was bored out of my mind. But Doc actually made me laugh. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the male version of me before I got married. <laughs> <laughs> Doc is really funny. That's true. I, have... I mean, I wasn't a sleeper, See, but I was a huge uh, freaking flirt. I'm still a huge freaking flirt. So to uh, me, like Doc is like the embodiment of magic as a guy. <laughs> I, I like totally like I Doc. I barely talked to Doc. Really? He didn't appeal yeah, at all. I mean, I, I, I'm post. Like, I have to use him. So, like, I don't. It's been a long time I since Corso. I've done that story. That's it. Like, pretty much, that's it. I, the Corso. That's it. So, I mean, there <laughs> is, is what happened. Elise is smuggler easy to please. Is Which He's one is on the Jedi. One, the Jedi Knight? Oh, well, then that's why. Because I yeah. haven't made it that far yet. I thought we were talking about he was on the smuggler. Never mind. Yeah, I don't. I think I might have just gotten Doc. Right. Maybe. Yeah, if you haven't, the, the problem with this is that you have to have played through everything to really know the lay of the land and all of this. If there's anything that you haven't done, you're kind of at a disadvantage on that sense. So, in that like sense, sorry, Elise. Because <laughs> like you were saying, the majority of this list. yeah, the, worry, the warrior and whatever. But I do know, <laughs> just looking at this list, you can see who's getting the shaft right now, right? Like the, the, the Jedi Knight is by far behind everyone else on, on returning companions. I think that um, stands out for one. Um, kind of tragic because they've been nice to some other classes, for sure. And then who really wants Ken Vaugh? 
I'm just asking. I like Kim Vell. You me, because I don't know why they gave me that other stupid Deshaun. We have like a tiny, teeny conversation. Aka Usar. <laughs> I never I think that's how you him. say his I was name. like, why did you give me this garbage? Why didn't you just give me back Kim Vell? What was the point of this? It's even the same voice. Why? <laughs> like, that was such a freaking head scratcher for me. I was like, why? I, f- I don't want this one. I want Kim Vell. I miss his Maybe lines. I can't get two voices. Yeah. In, in the end, you can because say his lines. Some- well, what about... I was wondering, like, maybe it's because, like, some people picked Zash. They chose Zash over him. So maybe they would they would have to pay two voice actors to come to bring Kim Vall back. Because if you chose okay. to side with Kim Vall and help him out, that means you have Zash's voice that'll be. So does does this mean him. we'll never see we'll never see Kim Vall? I don't know, but that's something to consider because that is two voice actors per everyone else's one. That will opinion. make me sad. I like him, Val. He's my monster. I do too. <laughs> he's and my I Huckleberry. That, I honestly think that's why they gave us the other crappy one is because they only had to do the one voice actor and they don't have to bring back Zash. So I honestly yeah. don't know if we'll ever well, see Well, if that's the case, they need to do him justice and kill him. You know what I'm saying? They need to do, like like they did HK-55. HK-55, they did justice to his story. It was a grand sacrifice. Boom, he's he's dead. He gave himself mm-hmm. a... I, I, I can accept. If I don't see him again, That's that was a good death. Or like the whole Torian vet, you know, choice. Um, If you're going to go there, um, okay. You know, but uh, you can accept it more when they, when something has happened. But if they just kind of never come back or they're, they're left in, in this kind of limbo, they need to do something to resolve it, I think. Right. Oh, uh, Magic, did you answer this? Or or did you answer, and I wasn't... Doc. Okay, doc. so you said Doc, Doc. at least. She said Doc, remember? She did say Doc, didn't she? She did say Doc. She, and she I think... She did say Doc. version of herself before she got married. Yep. <laughs> I believe that was a verbatim. Honestly, I'm sorry, I tried my best to tune that me. out. <laughs> if you guys have seen me in, in Gen Chat or even on my stream, you know that's still me very much, okay? I just don't ever act on the flirts. It's just flirting. Doc. Yeah, I gotta be honest with you. Is this list tough? I'm not really feeling any of these people. Uh, Nadia. Nadia would be the only one I would care about. And even that. My husband's like, I want that one chick. The one that I romance on my, my Jedi. I'm like, you mean the forgettable one, Nadia? And he's like, yeah, that the one. forgettable one? Not to him. He <laughs> remembered her. That's the only one. She's on the um, consular story, right? I mean, I yeah. like, who do I use? What's her name? It's Ashar, whatever her name is. That's who I use pretty much just. Ash- like, Ashara. Zavros. Yeah. I'm actually yes. happy she's coming back. She she was my that's, boo as well. But see, I haven't taken that tune through the Cotier Cotet. Yeah. So. So, yeah. So, yeah. this it's kind of, yeah, because it's going to come back straight to the character that you, yeah, I understand. Um, Let me see. How would I answer this? Out of the ones that are still to come back, I think by far and away, I would vote Scourge. Now, at least this is kind of where it kind of gets tough for you. Are you going to give me a spoiler? Because I don't no, want a spoiler. No, I'm not going to give you a spoiler. Let me, okay, let me, let me I see how I can say this. I am like Redna. Sorry. You can't complain about Redna anymore. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, this is a lore thing. I was not the complainer about the Gotek <laughs> Coffee spoiler. That was not me. Okay, so here's the deal. If you have ever read the book Revan, <laughs> Drew Carpition... And you've no. not. Okay. No. Scourge plays Revan, an integral. Fangirl. Yeah. The whole, he's, he's, Scourge is integral to the whole Revan story arc. And then what happens after, you know, in the bridge between um, the second Kotor and Swotor, Scourge is in that. That's why when you bump into him with the, with the Jedi Knight, I, I definitely read the book, play Kotor one, play Kotor two, read the I book Revan and then the play the Jedi Knight story. It's fabulous. The whole, it's, it's... I've started playing Kotor 2. Made it about I don't know, a quarter of the way. No, okay. probably not even that far. Because her, her name is in lore becomes Mitra Surik. You don't have it there at the time. But um, anyway, so th- that becomes... A, the whole thing is one long story. And Scourge is integral to that. And it bothers you. And without posting spoilers, although I think I am well within my rights to at this point, but I'm going to respect you at least. You're fine. Um, You're... Scourge... There is a lot of people in the community that are angry that Scourge, it, it was such low-hanging fruit that that he, he could have just had such a great entrance and been so meaningful. And the fact that we still haven't seen him kind of sucks all of that out. And they're going to have to, if, if they do bring Scourge back, they're going to have to... Have a great excuse yeah. why he wasn't there to down Valkorion. Yeah, they're 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 going to have to. I mean, they're going to have to make it good because I think they we're, should we're have mad. Him, like imprisoned. I think you should go save him. Like he should have been imprisoned by like the 
the Knights of Zakul yeah. or something like if that. If he's frozen in carbonite. Like, way. Yeah, I mean, he's going to have to be frozen in carbonite. I, that, I'm, yeah. I may accept that. <laughs> but even then, I'll be Maybe like. they sent a bunch of Mandalorian bounty hunters after him and got him down. I don't know who he is. I'm just offering you a... <laughs> He's a hardcore uh, Sith Lord who's been alive for many centuries because Valkorian yeah. did that to him. Um, KOTOR 2... He's the previous hand... He's the previous Mistra, ro uh, Wrath of the Emperor. There. Yes. Before the Juggernaut, he's the Emperor's Wrath. Yes. Anyway, so no more spoilers on that, but yes, Scourge yeah. is right, goodbye. Moving on. Absolutely be my vote. <laughs> Moving on, indeed. Would we like talk, to talk? Let's let's uh, send the results to chat. And while we do that, let's discuss. Um, oh, look at um, uh, Redna. Um, oh yes, let's not factor that but, out. Yes, yes. Redna, Redna said something too. Okay. He agreed with you. He did agree with me. Redna voted Let for me Scourge. Read this one. <laughs> okay. He said, "Voted for Scourge." If we really, if we are really returning to Nathema, it seems this is the last chance to have Scourge return with any meaningful agency knowing his deep rich backstory and i totally agree totally agree uh, anything short of him being captured and like being held out of the events or something that is a great place like maybe maybe he's been imprisoned on anathema i mean there's vaults that the emperor had there just because we've seen one doesn't mean there's nothing else i could there. accept that if he's stuck in a box yeah. <laughs> in the vault i, you I know? would totally be into that if he's a collector's yeah. item you know like down there in the i Emperor's. actually talked to volk about this that anathema was one of the ones we were super excited about and i think that redna hit like that nail right on the head that would be perfect and really that'd be the only thing acceptable for him to come back if they miss it on this i'm gonna have a strongly worded tweet for them <laughs> strongly worded strongly tweet, worded tweet. <laughs> <Nice>. hashtag salty <laughs> yes uh, I, right. there's a lot of people so, that agree on that what what was our uh what was the uh <clears throat> result okay so in chat what let's, let's chat. yeah talk about chat first kira carson yeah. three Behind Kira was Jason Wilson, I assume the dark side version, uh, two. <laughs> okay. And then dark was one. So somebody agrees with you, Magic, on dark. You're, you're in good Alrighty. company. But uh, zero for everyone else. So it's actually somewhat closely reflects what we had on the poll. It is, at least one and two. So out of 603 votes, Kira Carson was number one with 184 votes or 31%. Jason Wilson was number two with 146 votes or 24%. Scourge, Scourge was 109 votes or 18%. Kim Val agreed, they agreed with at least some of what you two said. Uh, 75 votes or 12%. I don't know what you see in that, Dave. <laughs> um, Nadia was 65 votes or 11 percent and then it's kind of like everybody else that Stock, <laughs> what we see in him is pure dark side Karen, Cedrix is seven votes or one percent zenith was one percent i don't even know why people got that zenith got above tango <laughs> zenith frankly. nobody because wants zenith, to see zenith <laughs> I don't, I don't even was, get me started on it was there. really red now the contrary and he voted <laughs> for the top, like six times just to check with the results was three votes which tano was annoying too but <sighs> i kind of like he's great he if you went dark side trooper yeah. Yeah. I on my Vanguard, I went dark side with her since my uh, commando was light side, and honestly, he was pretty fun. He made it interesting. Uh, not one I would go back and play through again to hang out with him, but he was fun for that time. Right. I used him and lost him. So okay, looking at these results, um, Kira Carson, about one in three, one in three people voted for Kira Carson. Everyone wants to see Kira Carson come back, which is interesting to me. Um, I don't know. I liked her. She was pleasant. She was. She was. I like, thought she was funny. She was girl next door. Oh, I thought like. Oh yeah, she had a great mouth on her. She she was mouthy, but that's about it. That's what he said. Uh, okay, so. <laughs> Actually, he did say that. <laughs> um, I overheard. Jason Wilson, of course, is next. So what I think stands out to me in these poll results is that people really want their romanceable companions back everyone likes their their everyone likes the romance i think um and then and i read some stuff Redmond. about i saw some of the stuff that jason says she's, Did I I know. Like a she's pretty freaky it's for sure like the harsh the dark side yeah 
there's this one where she you overhear her you're doing a mission and it's like it comes down in your chat box and she's like um oh, master i partied hard last night and i think i slept with a guy and killed him <laughs> but it was a good time and she's like just rambling about we're cool like, right possibly murdering someone and it was so chill and i'm like oh, that's in chat that I was like, wow, that's dark side Jason. Yeah, she's really and funny. She's like, talking about, she's a black widow. She slept with a dude and killed him. On my, uh, it was funny because on my um, juggernaut, I chose to romance and marry Vet. And I was like, this is the, right from the beginning, that's the one I'm going to go for. So I did. And obviously she's very interested and you have this whole love triangle thing for a while. But I was like, just get off me, you know, the whole time with her. And <laughs> she got to the point where she was like, I demand that you dump the Twi'lek and go with me. And then when I didn't comply, she she just flipped her lid. Uh, she's so well written. <laughs> I think a lot of people enjoyed uh, her spirit. <laughs> Let's just say it that way. Too bad the female people didn't get to do that with their characters. But you know, whatever. I just got hey, a letter. That, from that Pierce. Pierce is a you know. <laughs> no, if, you do get a one night stay with Pierce, and he passive aggressively tells Quinn by sending Quinn a letter in a um, study about how many Sith Lords cheat on their non-force using spouses. He's like, but don't worry, my lord, I don't believe it. That's just Pierce trying to drive a wedge between us. And Pierce is like, <laughs> so, I mean, that one is yeah. comical, but still, like, that's all you get. I'm like, okay, a little funny, but could have been better. Hey, indeed. <laughs> but I mean, I just, uh, so one thing that stands out to me about the poll, people want the romances back. The next thing that stands out to me, I think, that wants Scourge back, because I think the people that voted for Scourge recognize how, what a missed opportunity he is for the for story. And I think we could have a, uh, a good, um, that would have been a good return story. And, and they still may be able to make it epic. But, uh, but I mean, like, I don't see with five point, he's, he's not been announced in the coming 5.8 and 5.9. You know, at, at what point are we going to see him at 6.0? Like, at, at what point is is this a complete wasted opportunity or what? I don't know. Um, can I just play, again, devil's advocate to a point? I, well, I don't since Reg know. is not here, we'll let you. Well, I think it's more of a thinking exercise than really debating, being that I don't really know the story or any of that stuff. But Redness said Nathema would be an acceptable place for him to come back. And isn't that what 6.0 is supposed to be about? Is Nathema? So... I, I want to say Natha. Well, I want to say, I don't know. But, but I think the, the hint that I got from the most recent roadmap is that that Nathema thing happens before 6.0. We know nothing about 6.0 yet. Oh, and and everything right. wraps up on Nathema and then we're kind of reset for a 6.0 expansion. That's, that's the sense I gather. Ah, oh, I see. I guess I thought I must have read it wrong then because I thought six point zero was the whole Nathema thing starting back up. Again. I think it's so. it's the Nathema conspiracy is the name of five point nine. The next one, right? Mm. So maybe they're saving it for a surprise. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to help you out here. <laughs> sure, like let's that, make it a surprise. I don't, I don't know anything about it, nor do I have any dogs in this fight. So I kind of think it. It's going to have to be really freaking epic because if not, like I said, those strongly worded tweets <clears> they <throat> coming out. <laughs> yeah, but Charles again, Boyd, I have something to say to you. Oh Go find him in the bad gosh. feeling thing that's coming up here soon. That's right. I'm just wondering whether or not, though. I mean, again, I, I hate to keep banging, banging this drum, but you know, I have to. We have like a couple writers. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, At least do you it's really... that 5.9 will wrap everything up. That 6.0 is new. So, I mean, I don't know. I, if, you, if you have somebody you want to be like awesome sauce, I'm not sure 5.8, 5.9 are the places to like look for that awesomeness. I would think it would be right. 6 or 6.2 or... Well, yeah. there may be a 5.10 and a 5.11. We just don't know. You know, so right now, all we have is a roadmap. The roadmap gives us 60 to 90 days, you know, foresight. Anything beyond that is not well, not framed at all. And they're working on it. They're still putting it together. So we only we only have what they know they, they that they can release to us. So 
Um, okay, well, let's uh, let's transition into our deliberation section. Not as uh, not the, that we haven't been deliberating this entire time, but uh, what I wanted to do was kind of compare, um, kind of approach us from a number of different angles. For one, um, we have, and if you if you bring up your companion window, you can see that there is a section there where Lana and um, you know Koth and all of them are in, and those are the story, the story ones. And if you get through a, um, um, like Profit and Plunder, for instance, you get through that chapter, Vet and Galt both join that category um, of the story participants. But then you can go do, um, go look for Zalek, for instance, and go do the uh, Alliance Recruitment Alert uh, mission. And it's fun, and you go here and there, and you could run around all over an Ilum. But you pick him up, and then he goes into another category, which is kind of like, oh, these guys are just trailing. These guys are along for the ride. But but uh, we, uh, personally, I don't expect to see them in on any story. So we have a, a kind of a division that happens there, and then um, there's a division where where some of them, like also you, you collect them from veteran mode uh, star fortresses. There's that whole bunch, Rokas and... All of those guys. Oh, yeah. Those people you never use ever again. Yeah. yeah. So you got those, and they kind of dump into that miscellaneous <laughs> category as well. Um, you have some specialty ones, like the pig um, that you could have earned off the Nightlife event, or Master Ranos of the, the DVL, um, Darth Hexed. You know, there's some things that you have, some hoops you had to jump through to earn them. So you got those. Uh, companions that you earn by choice, namely like Arkin. Like if you decide that you're going to go that route, you have that option to have him in there. So, you, so what I see is like categorization that happens with a lot of this. You have then, as far as the returning companions, ones that come back, not necessarily to the story set, but to the the miscellaneous set um, that are now straight to class, right? So Andronicus Ravel comes back to the Sith Inquisitor, um, and that kind of a thing. Risha Corso, that kind of a thing. So you have them coming back. And even though there's a quick return story, they kind of get dumped in the miscellaneous thing. And then you have, it's there's still another category, which is the ones that you bought. So HK51 Treak, that if they took that away from us, we would have said, hold on a moment, I spent cartel coins on these guys. So, or maybe you didn't with HK, but anyway. I was going to say, HK, I think, is on another level than Treak. Right. And he got his own chapter. And then even then, there's another category, if yeah, I think about it, of work. like droids and uh, Tukata and all of these other quote-unquote companions. That, My next two. <laughs> yeah, that can fight with you, but they are worthless as far as having any kind of usefulness to any kind of story or interactivity. I don't have any of those. <laughs> I have several. I have, I have one of the droids from Iocath. I, have I the don't next have two. any. Oh, Spend some Cortel coins, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they had the which the one that was the colicoid droid they had here recently for direct sale i think that was pretty cool you could actually yeah but oh my god like that one's one of the cool ones let me tell you but it was expensive i mean True. i'm just yeah uh, that's bothersome I, yeah i kind of wish i i got the tukata and once i got the tukata i felt like it was <laughs> entirely over over hyped i was like what those things just just pukes and blow snot at me you know well, <laughs> that's about it someone was saying they what would happen if they took treak and hk away they won't take them away because actually when you first land on odessin if you went through and got treak and you got um hk 47 uh no sorry 51 hk 51 they're actually in the cutscene when you land on odessin and treak starts jabbering something and someone's like, what'd she say? And HK is like something about, oh, she's going hunting or whatever. So if you actually had them before oh, the storyline, that... they're in your uh, your initial right. cutscene on Odessin. And if you only have one or the other, they're also in there by themselves. But I found that out and was super excited and went and watched it over and over again just because I was like, wow, they're here. You never uh, see yeah, them here from there, them again, but there's there. a subtle something with HK fifty one and HK fifty five right in that scene where they're like, <laughs> they get a, a whiff of each other in some kind of way. I forget; it's been a while since I've played through that, but I well, thought that was funny too. And also, like when you get on the ship and he saves you, you're like, you look familiar. You look like you're from the HK series. He's like, oh well, like I don't know what you're talking about. I'm one of a kind. <laughs> it's like mm, <laughs> they all think they're you unique. Look HKs. Yeah, exactly. Diamond doesn't, then they all think they're unique. 
So yeah, so let me ask you guys, what do you think of this whole, um, boil it down, let's make it a lot more simpler. Maybe I'm just now talking to Elise. <laughs> 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 what do you guys think of the, um, of the, you have this, this category for story characters and then a category for, um, for like the, the slush bucket of everybody else. It just kind of gets dumped in this ever lengthening list of companions. Um, does that work? Is that necessary? Do you wish that maybe that the, they had figured out a way to bring more into the, the story category or what? If there was actually a story with each one where you had a conversation or two, like maybe after you do a couple of chapters, it like pops up an alert that you need to go talk to this person. Um, I would actually be interested in all those companions because then it would be worth the time that I spent going to get them. Otherwise, to me, I'm just kind of like, look at all these companions I'll never use. In fact, Verona Dens that you get from Nar Shaddaa mm -hmm. for the Star Fortress, I went and leveled her up on one character just so that I could say that I actually ever used her for anything. I like her. She's level 50. I like her. I whole, like her too. Her and she and Hexed. I could have my own little crew going with her, with her and Hexed yep. and Scourge and let's throw well, Akal Usar. <laughs> we got a nice little dark side um, crew going. Well, my, my armor mech who does my um, my augments, I have like four level 50 companions on there for crafting. And so I did Verona Dens on that one because I was like, I'll never use her on anyone else. I'm just going to do it once. Yeah. yeah. And Rokus, I like his name. Um, I'm kind of the same as, um, as Magic Ace. I, I don't... I don't bother with anybody really that's in the collection, save Blizz, because Blizz is awesome. Right. Um, and that, that, that little mission to get him was um, cute. So I liked that one. And also, it was on my bounty hunter. So, right. Um, so there's a bit of a, a history that they have, and that makes it worth doing. Correct. Different. And I think he says something specific to you if you're the bounty hunter, but maybe I'm wrong, being I've only done him on the Yeah, he calls hunter. you boss because that's what he called you um, right. when, you were on the sh when he's on the ship with you. He's like, oh, boss, oh, blah, blah, blah. And he starts jabbering about yeah. how he hasn't seen you in so long and that he's so much has happened and what he's done. Right. And then that's it. Then he doesn't talk to you about it then until <laughs> he joins you. And he's like, okay, now we're back to business. <laughs> or however he says it. He's like, yeah. okay, it's time to go back to being my boss now. So I, I enjoyed getting him back on my bounty hunter uh, but everybody else i'm just kind of like Meh. um with the story ones i think it's a little bit better but still um as i've said before it's hmm. my overall issue isn't necessarily the way that they've rolled out the companions it's just kind of my issue with the companions in this game period so if you want we can wait and talk about that at the end <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> like comparing it to because that's more than that's more than like a two second statement. So, yeah. So I like the story companion participants better than all of the rest of them. Right. The straight to class thing. I'm just, I think it's good for them to be, it's good and bad. They're at least giving people back their companions as they can with where they're at right now. It, it feels like they're making the best of the situation that they're in. So instead of making a big old chapter to bring back and draw the coast, you know, right? They're gonna make it so that the the class that had them originally, and you know, blah blah blah. But instead of a big one like profit and plunder, where you know, we got Galt and Vet back. I think that would have been a good time to introduce Andronicos back, just because it's like pirate stuff. Like Andronicos is literally a pirate. Like, I just thought, I thought they kind of could have, I know there. it would have been, yeah, I know it would have been a lot, but they could have said something like, oh, and our getaway pilot is, and then you see Andronicos, you know, something like that. Then, like, the actual sword could have a cutscene with him, and if you're not a sword, then you didn't have a big cutscene with him or anything, you know, that's just right. my opinion. I mean, and maybe they had planned on doing something like that, but then, you know, reasons. I, I don't know, but... I mean, I, I the straight-to-class stuff, just that's what it feels like to me, right. that they're trying to make the best of a situation. Um, it's kind of... Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's fair. Kind of weird. I think that's fair. Um, it, yeah, the bot ones, of course, they're not going to be over in the back. Um, and I like the specialty ones because they were earned rewards. I mean, what else are you going to do? I haven't gone to get either one of those two yet. So I, I don't know. We need to do a group... Thing event and go get hk51 go earn him the hard way no no no. i have 
him. Okay. But um, yeah. but no, I'm not forgetting about like again. Rhinos and Hexet. There's a cutscene and stuff. Oh, right. I think. Well, I Just think if you don't, or something. if you don't get those in the window that they were supposed to have done by jumping through the hoops at the time, because Rhinos was a DVL event and you could only right. get her through the. Which I got. And I missed her. her. Wasn't there? Did you have to do a? Darth Hex said there was the same kind of a thing, but it was like a. It was right. a lot shorter and it was a lot easier. It was like three um, flashpoints or three. Far more comedic. Yeah, it was easy. I mean, or three Hex war zones or something. Yeah. <laughs> Hex was hilarious. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, so I'm just kind of like, oh, look, I can click this thing and get her on my level one character. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm just kind of like, so, you know, I'm glad that they're doing what they're doing, but it's, again, my response is muted. Gus Somewhere. Tuno. <laughs> we got Yads in chat likes Gus Tuno. I'm so happy that he, that he came back with a lightsaber in hand, finally. <laughs> oh, good I was love. like, oh great, this guy again. I hated him the first time <laughs> Yeah, I Gus. I still don't have the thousand kills with him. And I'm like, I probably never will because I can't stand him that much. What I'll have to do... He's so is, incompetent, like, it's annoying. My... <laughs> yeah, like I'll have to put him as my companion and then go in and do um, some of the level 70 stuff. What is it? The uprisings where it's just waves of ads coming at you. And that's probably the only way I'm ever going to get kills with him is where I just do several of those right. uprisings with him as my companion. <laughs> it's probably a smart way, smart way to do it. Um, okay, let me throw this out there because, you know, on the... on the um, Well, let's talk about what Redna said because I think Redna... And he's mentioned this before. This is not actually a surprise to us in looking through his notes. Correct. We're going to summarize it for you. But essentially what Redna was saying was... We've got this this ocean of of characters now that that I that he doesn't feel connected with in any kind of way, and I think that resonates with me as well. I think I can agree with that. That that the reason that everybody wants specific characters back because they've romanced them before is because we have personal connection with them. If my character does not have a connection with Reina Temple or with um, I don't know Akal Usar or with you know, one of these other ones, then of course it's just more, more and more and more companions. And what Redna really wants to see is a culling of the herd. He wants to see like like a big reduction in in that, just to where it's back. Let's get back to basics. Back down to the the five, or however. I don't know if he wants to necessarily pick between them, but basically boil it down to these are I think my. Think you companions. should get to have a conversation and figure out if you want to kill him or not. That's what I think. Like he mentions can that. Can I shove my lightsaber <laughs> through this person's brain like Gus? I would shove a lightsaber through his brain. Wouldn't bat an eyelash. It would be fine. I did it to, right, to uh, Malavai Quinn. You know, like it's, yeah. oh my gosh, Skadge. So, you couldn't get through all the fat. You wouldn't be able to find it. <laughs> like it just bounced right off. So that's not going to work. Yeah, so, so you say, can. thing I forgot to mention okay. was that I like that with Darth Ranos, I mean, uh, with Master Ranos and Darth Hexed, if you mention Ashara, um, they act like they know her. Oh, yes, yeah, Ashara. And then she's like, oh, if you see that, um, Little Tagruta, you know, tell her blah blah blah. Like they actually talk about her. That was something that I thought was pretty cool. If, you, right. if you're on your Sorkin, you mention her, or like if you're on a Jedi Knight and you ask um, Rando, was like, "Hey, have you seen you know Kira or whatever?" She's like, "Oh yes, I've seen her." Blah blah blah. She was doing this. I like that they put that in there. That was something they yeah. didn't have to do. So, but added a nice touch. Yeah, it did. It was very good. I agree with you. Very very. Uh, especially if you've been kind of wondering where they are it, it makes sense they've been looking for you and you're looking for it them it gives you hope it does yeah a little Ooh. hope the rebellions are built on hope or something um so yeah but i mean but i also see that i also see that what they need to do is boil this down to here's the core cl you know everyone else is miscellaneous but here's the core group of people that we need to program around because for instance mm -hmm. we have vet comes back in one chapter torian comes back in one chapter and they're in that core set of people they can program it based on your okay i i as a player pick this person you know like I, you have the choice between the two of them i pick vet or i pick mm -hmm. torian they can program later on there's a database something that gets written there for that character where later on it goes oh um we need to refer to one to one of those characters do is that person still alive they go and they look back at your database thing yes they, they save this person okay so here's this person in the story they can do that with mm -hmm. a controlled set of companions but they can't do that with everybody correct there's too many and that is that is a bioware's thing yeah i mean you play mass effect all the way through and it, whoever you do whatever you choose in the first it. one goes all the way through the series and they will not be there in mass effect 3 let ashley so die. that's always the right answer <laughs> 
I told you I had to go get somebody else's save so that I could actually see what it was like to have I Ashley die because I, I didn't do it myself. I didn't even finish Mass Effect 3. I'm like, I can't do this. I just can't. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's awesome. Um Okay, so, keep going. so no, no, no this is a good opportunity, Elise, because that's all I really wanted to say to that. Is there any um, outside perspectives? Because uh, you mentioned that Bioware, this is what Bioware does. So one of the things that I was telling you earlier, and just to kind of fill everyone else in this, one of the things I love about Elise is that she's got such a breadth of gaming. Um, she's She plays everything, but not like super deep, but just kind of jumps into this, plays that, plays that, you know, and has a lot that she can compare things to. <laughs> so uh, in that sense... What insights do you have from other games um, that shed light on this? Well, my issue has always been, again, I play SWOTOR not because it's Star Wars, but because it's a Bioware game. That, that is why I started playing this game. Okay. So I brought my Dragon Age companion um, banter. You want a great light companion to banter at each other and make jokes and snipe at each other while they're in your party. Like, like Karis Vakarian, anything Vic Karis Vakarian's in, he's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do this and say this, yeah. and always picking up people. It's awesome. Or Alistair and Morgan, Dragon Age uh, Origins, like the the shutdowns. See, you have to go play it. The I'm shutdowns that she does in there on Alistair are just, just they're epic. So I was looking for that kind of a thing in in Swotor, and I'm still waiting for it. It, it okay. got closer. In Kotet, especially in what I was talking about, Profit and Plunder, you got to see that back and forth between Galt and Vet. And Hilo. And, and, and Galt um, and Hilo Viz, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And so I was like, oh, 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 are we finally going I there? I actually really liked and, that. Yeah. It, that's, because at the end of the Bounty Hunter story with Galt, he talks about like his one true love and his only real regret in life is that he messed it up with her. And then you see him in the new content. He's like... My, she's like my worst half, and he's like, "Oh, it's a long story." <laughs> and if you're a bounty hunter, you're like, "I know that story." And if you're not, you're like, "What?" Yep. So, I mean, so you get moments of it, but everything's just so muted in this game. So, with them, and it's gotten worse since they've added all these other kind of cannon fodder, basically companions in some cases. Okay. So d- and that's just it's it's kind of disappointing. That's one of the benefits of a Bioware game and is the connection with companions. So I think you, yeah. does does what Ritna say said resonate with you in the sense oh, that you're yeah. like, oh, there's too many companions. We're just swimming in them, and I don't have right. connection. I don't have any depth with any one of them as much as I, <laughs> I wish I had. I mean, we could take a little impromptu poll. I bet you and ask Chat. Um, of a Bioware game, what is your favorite companion from other Bioware games? And I'm sure, like, it wouldn't take anybody very long to go. I think you just you did. <laughs> blah, Feel free if you blah. want to tune in, guys. Give yes, us a... Yes, please do. Iron Bull is hysterical, by the way, in Dragon Age Inquisition. But, I mean, like, people write fanfic about Garrus or, you know, or Caden uh, or... You know, Iron Bull or God, I mean, like just piles of it. Is there a ton of fan fiction about any of the characters in Swotor? I'm honestly asking. If there is, I would love to know. Not that I have like seen. Gr- granted, at the same about time, there, there is. Theron, yeah. Oh well. We're not talking about that. That kind of fanfic. <laughs> yeah. But then that just kind of says something. I think they're missing. They're they're missing that, and I don't. I don't, I don't know if that's because we're just getting a deluge of characters now. Right. Um, or if it's just because that was just not something that they decided to do in this game. I don't know. But that would be the one thing that I think they really need to do something about. Clearly, if everybody's stoked about the romance options. Right. You know, there's an opportunity. Oh, there's an opportunity. Right. And the Torian chapter was awesome and that kind of romance relationship thing was the foundation of that chapter for me and right. again also with that i think they did both of those characters justice yeah. those two characters i think they did them justice however you pick you know between them and when that choice comes they did them yeah. justice and like that's the that's what i was referring to earlier with hk55 there is a even if it's a little heart you know heart tears at your heartstrings kind of a thing but you know whichever one ends they did it justice like they they 
that's the end of that character and I can move on with my life knowing that I made an awful choice but that I didn't have a choice or something but it, it kind of wraps puts a bow on it so um, yeah definitely um, okay um, I think this is probably a good time to hear from Magic Ace about well I, I wanted to say something before. Okay. I honestly really liked sorry baby girl's really excited too <laughs> but I honestly really liked um how they how they brought in your um your ship droids like you got a chance oh, to yeah. see your ship yeah. droids so like on the on the m side one he's like bad mouthing you and trashing you talking about how you're such a terrible person and a horrible master and he's like and i told him this and <laughs> yeah. blah, 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 like trash Two VR8. And i'm like where does a droid do this like how <laughs> Like, the, how's that program? <laughs> the droid's like bad mouth, like this, and talking about what he was gonna do, and then you're like, <clears throat> <laughs> he's clearing yeah. your throat, yeah. He's, he's like, oh, master, <laughs> oh, I missed you. I thought you were dead. Oh, crap. Like, there's panic in his voice. <laughs> I found that comical because I'm like, it's a droid. <laughs> it was pretty good, though. And then the pub side one was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to serve you, and let's help everyone, and do this, and do this. And he's, he's just so pub side, it's disgusting, but still funny. And the M side one is like a total coward for an Imperial, like trash talking until he's caught. Then he's like, I grovel at your feet. You're so wonderful. I love you so much. <laughs> Although it'd be really sweet to have the option to like push them out the airlock. That would be cool. Right. I will I will say the one thing I really dislike that they've done with companions is because you have them all on Odessa, you don't see them on your ship anymore. The ships feel so empty. Mm. I can't go to my ship and be like, Oh, I just want to go see this person. No, you can't. And I don't want to be on Odessa all the time. Sometimes I go to my ship because I'm like, I spent millions to put all this crap in my ship. I want to use it on occasion, you know? But there's nobody there because it's all empty. It's just me and my repair droid that I bought and my dummies, my war zone dummies and stuff. Like, that. that's it. So I really dislike that I can't see them on there anymore. I wish when you get your actual companions back, um, not all the extra ones, not all the fluff ones, but the ones from your story, I wish that those went back to your ship. That's my personal preference. The, or yeah, least, they like, killed the ships. Summer. That's, I mean, they made it to the world yeah. map. You don't even have to go to your ship anymore. So, Correct. Which I, I don't. still do. Well, you do to pick up certain missions. You have to go to your ship. But still, it's like, yeah, you don't have to travel by going to your ship. I will say, though, that I, I got really lazy with it. I'll still go to my ship for the sheer fact of saying, I got a ship, dang it, I'm going to use it. But then I won't go to the cockpit. I'll use the map, <laughs> stand right where I'm at from talking on my hollow terminal and use the map to travel. <laughs> so, yeah, I did do that. But <clears throat> anyways, I just want to point that out. Also, um, the whole thing with Scorpio, if your lights are dark side, you finally get to see the end of Scorpio's story. Um, Her I will say, right. Yeah. I will say that I did think it was a little off because when you do the, um, the agent storyline, it talks about her beginnings on Bell Savis and how some of the people that were there in the Stark Ball saw her being created. So I'm like, are you saying you saw her being created on Iocath or what? Because now suddenly she's from Iocath. I found that kind of strange. And I think that maybe they missed something there or forgot about it or they're just like, oh, no one will remember. Right. But yeah. For some reason, the there, whole... there's an inconsistency consistency, and that really bugs me. Every time I do the Scorpio storyline, so it ask, bugs me so much. So ask Charles. I'm going to. Darn strongly it. Worded in a strongly tweet. worded tweet. <laughs> <laughs> no, that does bug me, but I, I enjoy it. I, I enjoy the stories for the companions. I do. If they're actually a story. If it's not a story, I'm like, oh, look. And I hate that people whined for a romance with Arkin. I'm like, I've been whining for <laughs> with Taylor Strelick since the beginning. Really? She was my, my very first character was a female. Taylor Strelick? Yes, you get to flirt with him, and he's acting all bashful. He's like, oh, 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 oh. And then he's done, nothing happens. And I'm he's like, he's more coy than Melavi Quinn. <laughs> yeah, like at least, oh, at goodness. least with Quinn, I get to get some before I kill him. Nothing with Talos, and here people whine for what a month or two, and they get uh, Arkin. I'm just like favoritism. But <laughs> anyways, we want to say thank you so much for coming to watch us on the council. Thank you for supporting us, for hanging out with us, for talking, and for being in the straw polls, because those are super great. And without you guys talking to us through the straw polls, we'd feel sad, lonely, and not have as much content to talk about. So thank you for that. Thank you for helping us out. And thank you so much for downloading the podcast, because we actually are reaching really good numbers with that. 
and we just want to say thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank Absolutely, you. Thank you. guys. And yes, also thank you for putting up with us from week to week. I do feel like we kind of put on an episode of Archer. <laughs> it's like drinking out of a fire Amazing. hydrant when you show up at the council. So we <laughs> have a blast. Ants, that's how you get in. <laughs> exactly. So uh, with all of that said, that brings us to the end of the episode. The council is hereby adjourned. Uh, if you'd like to reach us, you can email us at the council at the council You can find Elise on Twitter at a brown 35 magic ace at the magic ace. Uh, I am at, uh, I am Sakari. And Redden is R3DN4 on Twitter. Uh, don't forget to visit our uh, website at thecouncilswotor.com. Uh, follow us on social media. All of the links and panels are down below. You can find them all there. Uh, also, don't forget our Patreon page if you would like to uh, be a patron of our art. Uh, Patreon.com slash thecouncilswotor. That is it for us this week, my friends. Remember the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise. The tragedy is that he only had one book. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great week, guys. We'll see you next week. I understand. You are on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of master. What? How can you do this? This is outrageous. It's unfair. How can you be on the council and not be a master? Take a seat, young Skywalker. Forgive me, master.